Are you ready for some more star filled news? I know I am. So we've got some brand new leaked images from the alpha build of star filled and it's giving us even more insight as to what to expect from this game. There's heavy speculation around these images right here. What could that be in the distance? A lot of people are wondering, could it be a death star? I personally think that is a bit of a stretch a big time, but yeah, we'll dive into these leaked images and have fun speculating as to what is going on right here. Of course, it's from apparently the 2018 alpha build of the game, but this image right here, someone discovered something really, really cool. I'm gonna talk about that also in just a moment because a lot of you guys are wondering, hey, Robbie, will we see drivable vehicles like Land Rovers around plants and things like that, or even unmanned things, uh, unmanned vehicles? And yeah, it looks like it's very, very possible. The biggest question is, can Bethesda's engine handle vehicles in this streamable environment? Because previously, a lot of people thought, no, that's not possible. We have comments from the developers on that one as well. But let's dive into the actual leak right now. So these are again from the 2018 alpha build, apparently of Starfield. We'll start out with this one because this is very curious. It looks like some really cool base building in very much what is a test environment but we had an interesting comment that piqued my interest even more this one right here it says i just want to know that the thing floating off in the distance on the fourth pick isn't the death star this one comes from funky man 3. i was like wait what back up what are you talking about so you can see in the distance and i zoom it in here a very blurry gray sphere I don't know what that is. It could be anything. It could be a moon, a meteor that you could travel to. Who knows? Or maybe it is a Death Star. But it would be really cool to also be able to build your own space station type Death Star thing in this game. Who knows? Uh, but then we have this one. Uh, of course, this is some sort of stilted, I guess you would say, base. It's very interesting that it's risen up on these type of stilts, as you can see. I am so curious if this is some sort of uh, you know, makeshift garage for a vehicle that you can actually, you know, park there or something like that. We'll have to wait and see what this is. Then, of course, we have a closer zoom in picture. Not much to devise from this one, but it does look really, really cool. But this is interesting to me because I feel like they're showing off and showcasing perhaps ray tracing technology here. The reflections are very, very good looking right there. Very sharp. But this shot right here from the trailer someone noticed something brand new about this i'll dive into that right now so let's do this so this is the thread right here first of all we got to give credit where credit is due uh so right here it says tire tracks on the cargo bay door this could mean we could load vehicles into our ships interesting this comes from matrix ss7 and yeah it's very interesting because as you can see right here those clearly look like tread marks for sure. So perhaps we will have some sort of rover with us exploring the lands as we go, exploring new worlds. We'll have to wait and see uh, what happens with that one. But a lot of us are scratching our heads wondering, well, you know, can this engine or even previous Bethesda engines handle vehicles? Can the world stream that quickly in a successful manner? So we have some comments about that. So first of all, let's zoom this in here from Jewel Smith, who says this. Is this why there are no working vehicles in Fallout? I always thought it was kind of funny that we could build a generator or computer terminal in a settlement and repair power armor, and mod weapons, but couldn't get a motorcycle one, uh, running. Yeah, always made me curious, too. Now we have Joel Burgess, who is a level designer at Bethesda. I think he's moved on from Bethesda. But he goes on to say this. Yeah, I was going to say exactly this. The lack of vehicles was never a tech driven decision. It's that adding vehicles would fundamentally change the exploration and pacing of the game and ultimately drive you towards making two games, the one on foot game and the one in car one. So that's interesting because he's saying or at least claiming that Bethesda's engine has always been able to handle vehicles. And that's saying something considering that, yes, the engine now has been, of course, fully upgraded for Starfield with all sorts of new bells and whistles. So in my opinion, it is very possible and plausible that we would be seeing drivable or even unmanned vehicles in Starfield. 
Perhaps even something that you can control remotely. That would be very, very cool as well. Now, I did want to highlight this comment. This is so important. It comes from Frogboy8807. Take a look at this one. It says, what stage of dev is this from? This looks like a very, very rudimentary prototype pre-vertical. Folks, shouldn't take anything from it. Yes, remember, take with a grain of salt everything that we're discussing here. It's heavy speculation. Uh, of course but yeah that ray tracing stuff right there the reflection is looking really really good for sure and the purple in this shot i would imagine is some sort of base building mechanic perhaps it's going to be even better than what we saw in of course previous fallout games so i think they probably advanced it even further now it's interesting because bethesda actually was experimenting with a space game some time ago check out this thread right here from the Kedrick, he says this, Bethesda's canceled space game, The Tenth Planet, in 1995. Do you think we could see references to this game in Starfield? And here are some shots from the, like, I guess, pre-alpha build or something from The Tenth Planet. And it shows how there's big ships, space battles, and that sort of thing. And it would definitely be interesting to see some call-outs back to this game or homages to, uh, of course, The Tenth planet which is would be really really cool to see will we see space combat in starfield has yet to be confirmed but there's good indication that we would of course be seeing some sort of space exploration a lot of people are celebrating the actual space design of the spaceships as you can see right here they are looking sharp i absolutely love the realism behind the look of these spacecrafts and it seems like there's going to be different varieties within those space designs dedicated to perhaps combat uh cargo and things like that so yeah now we have this thread right here it seems like you all are getting very excited by what ha what the team todd howard and everyone is saying at bethesda about starfield check it out right here this is from this one comes from excuse me miserable tip 4099 his starfield may be the first game ever to really perfect the bethesda open world formula and here's why Hmm, this had me curious. It says, it seems like no matter what story we write, the one the players tell themselves is the one that they think about and love the most. The Todd from Into the Starfield Episode 2. No other sentence has made me more hyped for this game. And what incredible balls it must take for a lead dev to admit such a thing, that any story they write will inherently be less meaningful than the one the player creates for themselves. And finally, after all these years, it feels like Bethesda has finally embraced this fact about their fans and are creating Starfield from the ground up with the design choice in mind. You know, I'm seeing a lot of what they're saying in their, you know, dev blogs or dev diaries where they speak together. It's really uh, indicative of them going back to Fallout 3, to Skyrim. And yes, I'm going to say it. That gets me very, very excited for what they have planned for Starfield. Even when they mention dialogue options and things like that, they're going back. Because in my opinion, sometimes going backwards is going forwards, especially in this case uh, with Starfield. Now, he goes on to say this. When people ask why Skyrim is so popular, how I've got 2,000 hours in it, even though I hardly use any mods, why I've made 100 plus different characters instead of just playing 10 characters completion, why it seems so infinitely replayable, this is the explanation. Bethesda games are great first and foremost, in my opinion, because they create the most fully realized game world to be a part of. And this, is this right here, uh, I want to back up a little bit because also you have to remember that with this new game, Starfield, it seems like we're going to have multiple worlds. Uh, and also, I'm curious about your own little space that you'll have. They have these really interesting concept arts which show perhaps we'll be able to have our own family, pets, and things like that. But I feel like having your own space is also going to be very, very significant. Now, it goes on to compliment, of course, um, what Bethesda is doing here. I don't want to overhype it too much because we haven't even seen gameplay but yeah, let me know if you guys are hyped for Starfield. And now it is time to dive into your top comments for my most recent Starfield video. Let's do this. So my most recent video, check it out on the channel, by the way, was this one right here. Starfield gets a new update from Bethesda. Fantastic news about the future of Starfield. And yeah, they got multiple development studios working on the game right now. One from Austin 
They were formerly working on Fallout 76. They have all hands on deck for this one. They don't want to screw it up, which I think is great news. Now, let's see what you guys had to say about this one. We have Moxie Rocker who says, The more I hear about Starfield, the more excited I get, but I'm trying to hedge my bets. With so many recent disappointments and taking into account previous IPs from Bethesda, I really hope they're listening to feedback on other games. The one thing I hope they can accomplish is to make their universe feel full and alive. That was my main issue with Fallout 4. It just felt empty. Yeah, that's going to be always a concern for open world RPGs of this nature, especially after playing, honestly, Cyberpunk, how dead it felt. And they still have ways to go with that one. So hopefully it feels alive, especially when we're talking about between the factions. Now, Casey Tong says this. I like hearing about a studio openly admitting they took inspiration from other studios. It's possibly a good sign at what they value about game development. That's that it's not simply about money and beating everyone else by destroying your competition. It's a healthy kind of competition that encourages feeding off of one's another accomplishment. Yeah, you know, what I always found fascinating also about Bethesda is they are not a company that's listed on the stock market. They don't want to have outside influence telling them what to do. They want to be able to figure out for themselves. And that's something that I ultimately do respect with what they do with uh, their games. And I hope they stay that way. Uh, and I feel like they are trying to find themselves again in Starfield. So cross our fingers. This one turns out to be like another Skyrim. We'll have to wait and see. But there it is. The latest happenings around Starfield. Let me know what you make of these leaked images. Is it a Death Star? Hmm. No one knows. It'd be really cool if we saw some sort of alien race that was really threatening in this game. But I guess they're going super ultra realistic with absolutely everything that they do here. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, I really don't want to overhype it too much, but I'm excited. Stay tuned for more. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all next time. Take care.